Imagine a temple so massive, so intricately carved, that it defies everything we know about ancient construction. A structure made from a single block of stone, with no room for error. A feat so ambitious that it leaves you wondering, how did they do it? Was it really just 7,000 workers chipping away with simple tools? Or could there be something more? Something hidden beneath the surface of history? The Kailasa Temple isn't just a masterpiece of art. It's a riddle carved into stone that challenges everything we understand about the ancient world. And here's the real mystery. Where did all the stone go? How did they carve from the top down without a single mistake? And why do some believe there's more to this temple than meets the eye? Stay with me, because once we dig into the theories surrounding this temple, you'll see why the Kailasa Temple remains one of the greatest unsolved mysteries of all time. In the heart of India lies a mystery, centuries old and intricately carved into stone. The Kailasa Temple, nestled within the majestic Ellora Caves, holds stories of kings, queens, gods, and legends that have endured through time. Among these tales is the captivating story of Queen Manakavadi of the ancient kingdom of Alapura. Legend has it that her husband, a king from Alajapura, was cursed with an incurable illness, a punishment for sins committed in a past life. Desperate for a cure, the king embarked on a hunting trip to Mahi Samala near Elora, while the queen devoted herself to prayers, seeking Lord Shiva's incarnation, Grishneshwar. This was her singular vow. If her husband were healed, she would construct a temple in the god's honor. Miraculously, after bathing in a sacred tank, the king's ailment vanished. True to her word, the queen immediately commissioned the temple. She also decided to complete the project before breaking her fast. However, no architect dared to meet the queen's demands until a humble local craftsman named Kakosa from Python stepped forward. He promised to build the temple from the top down. Within just a week, the queen witnessed the temple's crowning structure, or Sikara, rising from the sky. The temple was named Manikeshwar in her honor, and the city of Alapara, now known as Elora, was born. This tale merely sets the stage for the Kailasa temple's story. Fast forward to the 8th century CE, when the mighty Rashtrakuta dynasty, having overthrown the western Chalukyas, claimed the Deccan Plateau. It was during this period that King Krishna I commissioned the Kailasa Temple, named after the sacred mountain in Shiva's mythology. Carved from a singular monolithic rock, this temple represents not just a feat of devotion, but also an unimaginable architectural genius. Stretching 300 feet long and 175 feet wide, the entire structure was carved vertically into the rock, an extraordinary endeavor that was accomplished without scaffolding and using only simple tools like chisels and hammers. While you watch this video, you can't help but wonder, how did they achieve this? Scholars estimate that over one and a half to two million cubic feet of rock were removed to create the temple. The builders made this monumental structure from the Sahayadri Hills volcanic basalt, sculpting massive trenches straight down into the hillside. Yet, one of the greatest mysteries remains unsolved. Where did all that stone go? The more plausible explanation lies in the unique properties of the local rock itself. You see, the outer layers were softer and more easily chiseled away while the harder core remained intact for the intricate details. Masons and sculptors worked in harmony, one team removing rock while another began the elaborate carvings immediately. This coordination allowed them to shape this temple with remarkable precision, despite the absence of modern technology. Architects likely used a model to guide their work, possibly drawing inspiration from the Virupaksha temple in Patadakal, which shares design similarities. However, while Virupaksha is impressive, Kailasa is twice its size. Stepping inside the main portico, you are welcomed by divine imagery. A carved panel shows Gajalakshim seated on a lotus, with four elephants pouring water over her, a symbol of prosperity for all who worship Shiva. 
At the heart of the complex, the Sikara rises 96 feet into the sky, crowned by an octagonal shape typical of Dravidian architecture. Surrounding the sanctum are intricately carved halls and mandapas, while life-size elephant sculptures seem to bear the temple's weight on their backs. The towering victory pillars, each standing 45 feet tall, greet visitors near the temple's entrance. And then there are the stories told in stone. On either side of the temple's main shrine, panels depict scenes from India's greatest epics, the Ramayana and the Mahabharata. In seven vivid rows, the Ramayanan carvings narrate Rama's exile, Sita's abduction, and the ultimate battle between good and evil as Hanuman leads the army of monkeys to Lanka. The Mahabharata panel also tells of Krishna's exploits and the fierce battle that determined the fate of the Pandavas and the Karuravas. These stories are carved into the temple's walls, standing as a tribute to the cultural heritage. Imagine standing before the Kailasa temple in its prime. Legends say its towering walls were once coated in a brilliant white plaster, so radiant it mirrored the sacred Mount Kailash, which is said to be Shiva's celestial home. As sunlight struck the temple, it felt like the very mountain had descended to earth. But beneath the temple's brilliance lies an even deeper story. Scholars believe the temple was once called the Rang Mahal, the Painted Palace. They claim the walls weren't just carved, but alive with vibrant frescoes. Gods, demons, and heroes, their stories painted in bold colors across the stone. Though time has faded these scenes, fragments of the once vibrant artwork still cling to the temple. On the temple's southern side, etched into the rock, a powerful story comes to life. Ravana, the ten-headed demon king, in a moment of defiance, shakes Mount Kalash, challenging the gods. With a mere press of his toe, Shiva subdues the demon's power, reminding the world of his quiet yet absolute strength. This act of effortless control might be why the temple carries the name Kailasa. Some say it's a tribute to the god who remains unmovable, even in the face of defiance. One tourist gave an account of his experience. As you walk deeper into the temple, it feels less like exploring a monument and more like embarking on a spiritual journey. Passing through the Gapuram, the grand entrance, you leave behind the noise of the world. The halls grow darker and narrower, guiding you deeper, as though stripping away the distractions of life. By the time you reach the sanctum, the core of the temple, you're not just physically ascending, you're reaching toward the divine essence of Shiva. According to him, light and shadow play across the temple's surfaces, bringing life to its carvings. Even the smallest sliver of light seems to hold a lot of power. The balance between darkness and light mirrors the path to enlightenment the temple symbolizes, a journey from the physical world toward the divine. We can all agree Kailasa is more than just a masterpiece. Some have even dubbed it the world's eighth wonder. Every stone and every carving is part of a larger whole, much like the soul's connection to the universe. And through the ages, Kailasa's defiance of time and destruction tells its own story. Empires rose and fell. Attempts were made to replicate its awe, but none succeeded. Even when the Mughal emperor Aurangzeb tried to dismantle it, Kailasa stood firm. The Kailasa temple leaves more than just awe in its wake. It leaves questions. How could something so massive, so detailed, be carved from a single rock in a time without modern tools? This is where the mystery deepens. Was it pure human skill? Or could something beyond our understanding be at play? Let's start with the most popular theory that suggests this monument was made by pure devotion and sheer human labor. 7,000 workers toiling under the hot sun, chiseling away at the mountain's stone for 18 long years. That's nearly two decades of relentless hammering and chiseling, slowly extracting almost four lock tons of rock. Imagine the constant rhythm of hammers striking stone, the air thick with dust, the weight of such an enormous task hanging over them. They would have had to remove roughly 60 tons of stone every single day, working with nothing more than rudimentary tools, 
hammers, chisels, and mallets. Here's the thing, it's not just the sheer volume of rock that's mind-boggling, it's the precision. Carving from the top down, the workers couldn't afford to make a single mistake. One wrong stroke and the entire structure could have been compromised. And yet, against all odds, they pulled it off, creating a masterpiece that has stood the test of time. But as impressive as this theory of human labor is, it still raises questions that remain unanswered to this day. Where did all the stone go? There's no evidence of piles of rock or a nearby quarry large enough to hold the debris from such a massive excavation. It's a mystery that continues to baffle historians and archaeologists alike. Could there be more to the story? That's where an entirely different theory comes into play. Some people suggest that the Kailasa Temple's creation couldn't have been achieved with just primitive tools and human effort. They argue the temple's construction required something more, perhaps advanced technology or even extraterrestrial intervention. It sounds outlandish at first, but when you consider the incredible precision of the carvings, the sheer volume of rock removed, and the absence of traditional tool marks, the theory starts to sound more plausible. Imagine energy-based tools, lasers, or some kind of unknown technology at work, slicing through the mountain with an ease far beyond what hammers and chisels could ever accomplish. The carvings themselves are so intricate and flawless that it's hard to believe they were done by hand, especially when you consider the tight spaces and complex shapes involved. Could the ancient builders have had access to knowledge and tools that have since been lost to time? Or did something else, something otherworldly, step in to assist? While there are no ancient texts or artifacts to confirm this theory, the mere possibility opens up a whole new realm of speculation. What if the secret behind the Kailasa Temple's construction lies in a technology far ahead of its time? one that we can't even comprehend today. As mind-blowing as the Kailasa Temple is, it's not the only marvel that defies explanation. Just look at some of these ancient structures. First, imagine walking through the humid air of Micronesia, only to stumble upon Nan Madal, a city seemingly built on water. Over 100 artificial islets rise from the coral reefs, constructed from enormous basalt blocks, each weighing several tons. But here's the catch, this island had no source of such massive stones. How did an ancient civilization transport and arrange these blocks into a city grid, especially one that's built on coral? Like the Kailasa Temple, it feels almost impossible for its time. Some speculate it was created by powerful rulers who had long since disappeared, leaving their island fortress behind. To this day, the methods of its construction remain one of the Pacific's great unsolved mysteries. Next, let's shift to a more modern puzzle, the Coral Castle in Florida. Unlike the ancient structures, this one was built in the 20th century, but its mystery is just as baffling. Edward Leed Scalnan, a man of slight build, single-handedly constructed this massive stone fortress, moving coral blocks weighing several tons. How did he do it? No one knows. Lead Skalnan worked in secret, claiming to have discovered the lost techniques of the Egyptians. Without modern machinery, he left behind a monument that still baffles engineers today. Just like Kailasa, it raises the question, what knowledge have we lost along the way? Finally, beneath the Earth's surface in Malta lies the hypogeum of House of Lina. Carved out of solid limestone around 3300 BCE, this underground temple complex was not only a marvel of engineering, but also a place of deep acoustical mystery. Certain chambers resonate at specific frequencies, amplifying sound in ways that modern science still struggles to explain. Did its builders possess a forgotten understanding of acoustics, or was it part of some lost ritual practice? Much like Kailasa, the hypogeum seems to have been crafted with a purpose that goes beyond what we can fully grasp today. I can't help but think maybe the ancients were more civilized and advanced than what we have now, because we still can't understand what happened and how all that was possible. But the mystery doesn't end there. 
Let's return to the depths of the Kailasa Temple, where a series of hidden caves were sealed off during British rule after explorers reported unusually high levels of radioactivity. The caves have been closed ever since, but their discovery has sparked endless speculation. Some believe these caves could hold the key to the temple's construction, perhaps hiding ancient technology or even weapons that were once used to carve this magnificent structure. The radioactivity could be a sign that something more than natural forces were at work. Perhaps the advanced tools said to have built the temple are hidden away in these sealed chambers. However, not all theories about the Kailasa Temple explore the extraordinary or extraterrestrial. Some scholars offer a more grounded interpretation, seeing the temple as a profound expression of Hindu cosmology. To them, it's not just an engineering marvel, it's a spiritual map carved into stone. Every part of the temple represents the soul's journey from the material world to divine enlightenment. As you move through its dark, cave-like corridors, it's as though you're shedding the distractions of the earthy realm. And when you reach the inner sanctum, where the temple spire stretches toward the sky, it's a symbolic ascent toward the divine. But as elegant and poetic as this interpretation is, not everyone is convinced. Some argue there's a much simpler answer to the Kailasa Temple. Scholars and critics alike often debate the more tangible aspects of the temple's construction. Theories about human labor, alien technology, or hidden radioactive caves all have their own critics. Some even question the accepted narrative of human labor, pointing out that the timeline of 18 years seems improbable for such a monumental task. How could a workforce of thousands manage to remove four lakh tons of stone with such precision and speed, using nothing more than hammers and chisels? And where is all the debris? The lack of stone remnants nearby remains a puzzle for many. Then there's the extraterrestrial theory. Captivating as it may be, it doesn't sit well with everyone. Naysayers argue that the temple's architecture is consistent with other rock-cut structures from the same era, all of which were crafted using traditional methods. These skeptics point out that while the scale of Kailasa is extraordinary, there's no hard evidence of any advanced technology or alien involvement. If humans built it, they did so using the same skills and tools available to other ancient civilizations. Even the mystery of the radioactivity in the hidden caves beneath the temple raises a few brows. Those who dismiss the notion of ancient technology or hidden weapons lean toward a more mundane explanation, geological formations. The natural seepage of radon gas, common in certain types of rock, could easily account for the reports of radiation. While the caves themselves remain sealed off, many argue that the presence of radioactive materials doesn't necessarily suggest anything more than natural forces at work. But even that is not enough answers to the questions we have. The Kailasa Temple, with all its unanswered questions, is just one part of a much bigger story. One that takes us to a place even more mysterious, Mount Kailash itself. They share more than just a name. Kailasa Temple is a tribute to the sacred mountain, but Mount Kailash is believed to be the very home of Lord Shiva that holds secrets that go far beyond anything we've explored so far. Why has no one ever reached its summit? Why do some believe the mountain is not just sacred, but a center of unexplained energy, maybe even a portal to another realm? There are stories of strange phenomena, of time behaving differently, and of ancient texts that could tell us more. If you thought the temple was a mystery, wait until you hear what Mount Kalash holds.